Welcome to Outbound Labs by Predictable Revenue, where we share the results of our prospecting experiments, what we learned along the way, and what it means for your team. Hey everybody, I'm Colin. And I'm Lavinia. And uh, we're at Outbound Labs. And today we're gonna try a new approach, a new background, um, <laughs> but we're talking about how to improve your response rates. And what are we talking about? How are we gonna do that today, Lavinia? Yeah, so we're going to look at how you can reduce the number of follow-up emails you're sending, but still keep the response rates high. So naturally that means you're gonna be sending fewer emails and getting a higher response rate. Which is interesting because a lot of the research that I've seen, or at least research, air quotes research, a lot of the blog posts that I've read they've really started with, hey, you need to be sending more emails. And I, we've all seen the post of like, oh, if you send 11 emails, 11 follow-ups or 11 total emails instead of seven total, you're going to get so many more responses. And we've all seen the graph of like, oh, it's nothing, nothing, nothing. And then a huge spike at the 11th, 11th email. Yeah. And that, what we found out, um, well, I'll keep on to the hold of the results yeah, until alert, we get tell. to there. Yeah. Oh I just God. got so excited. I was going to go straight into you it. You got to listen to the whole video. <laughs> There's something else going to. So how did we work this out? How did we try and look into whether actually sending more emails was going to help us out or not? Basically, what we decided was somebody, one of the one of our team members um, within the, the account strategist, the team that's actually running Outbound Labs, had this idea that if we're sending more emails and the messaging isn't as targeted, then it's giving us more opportunities with, for somebody, more opportunities to annoy somebody. And I think that was the original hypothesis. So if we're, if we're off on our targeting and we're sending really long cadences, we're just annoying them more by sending more email. Yeah, exactly. And so we thought we send so many email campaigns um, for all our clients across the board for the last three or four years. So we have so much data actually it added up to 4 million conversations. And with all that data, we thought there's something we can do with that. So what we decided to do is we actually had uh, the luxury of one of our data scientists and our product chief product officer. And basically we looked at, we pulled out all the basically valid responses. So we're not looking at out of offices. We're not looking at unsubscri mm -hmm. unsubscribes. Um, and if we're basically, we're just looking at sort of a two week cohort, the first sort of two yeah. weeks of the conversation. Yeah. And we wanted to start in the first two weeks because that's where we found out, as Colin was saying, that's where we found the vast majority of these valid responses. So the first thing we learned was we have a two week time frame from sending that initial email to getting a response out of the prospect. After the two weeks, whether you're sending only the first follow up email or your 10th, you're exactly the same. Um, you have exactly the same chance of getting a response and it's very low. The, one of the interesting things to me was that of all the emails that we'd sent, 35% of all conversations, or sorry, 35% of all meetings that we had booked happened on that first message. Yeah. And I think what we had said is, so 35% on the first and then 70% mm -hmm. on the first three messages. And then after that, a pretty significant drop off. Yeah, exactly. After the third message, so from that fourth, um, well, the third follow up or fourth message onward, the drop in responses was significant, let alone the drop in actual meetings booked. So we were thinking, we're looking at the stats and we're thinking, well, we're still getting a few responses at the end. I mean, isn't it worth it if we send 10 follow ups to someone and we get one meeting booked out? But what we've been doing a lot of recently is really looking at and understanding how we're using our resources, where we're we putting our time and effort into those emails. Um, and we came to the conclusion really that if we can send three emails to a prospect and we can have everyone working on that email cadence and getting a higher level of responses, it's a lot more worth the time of those running those camp them, the people running those campaigns than to have them sending 10 follow-ups to several thousand people and maybe getting one meeting. 100%. I think the interesting thing for me is, you know, I, I, the number of times I've, I've listened to sort of Aaron talk, you know, whether live in presentations yeah. or in front of clients, the one thing he always comes back to when people ask him about email is you can only be annoying by being annoying. And yeah. I, it's, a, it's a cheesy total dad thing to say, but I think this is 100% true in this case that if, you, if you're on and you're messaging, people are gonna get back to you. And the majority of people are gonna get back to you in those first couple emails. And all that you're doing by continuing to send email after email after email after somebody hasn't responded to you, is just piss them off. So I think at the end of the day, 
pretty, pretty valid results. Send fewer yeah. emails. We saw a pretty significant drop off after, was it the third follow-up? It was the third email. The so third that's email. the second follow-up. So from that fourth email or third follow-up you're sending to them, you're really not going to increase your chances of success. Perfect. So takeaways, be less annoying, send for your emails, <laughs> spend more time on your targeting and personalizing yeah. those first couple of emails. Cause you really Always. only get three strikes. Yeah. Three strikes and you're out. <laughs> I'm surprised you know a baseball reference. All right. cool. <laughs> I don't actually know what it's about. <laughs> don't even know what it means. It's right. relevant. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thanks everybody. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye.